This video is for the written homework solutions for chapter 10.3. Uh, hypothesis tests for population means. First problem, problem number two, is just the idea of uh, determining a critical value like we've done before. This time though we're not using a Z, or we're not using a Z critical or a normal calculator. In this case we need to um, calculate a critical value, but we're looking for a T critical in this case. T critical value, and the way we're going to do that is through a T calculator. So what would be if we had a, let's draw one out here, a right-tailed test. We're looking over here. We're looking for the critical T value where alpha equals 0 0.01. In this case, we also know uh, your degrees of freedom are equal to 22. So we're looking for the critical T here where alpha is 0 0.01 on that side there. And so let's go ahead and stat calculator, T calculator. And in this case here, degrees of freedom were, uh, for number two, for that one, were 22. Right tail tests, let me clean that out. And this is a 0 0.01, you know, 0 0.1, not 0 0.01. I better fix that. It's 0.1 is for 2a and we should get 1.32 so it's not 0 0.01 but your t for this one is 1.32 it's not that it's 0 0.1 that's what we put in and that's how you go ahead and do this um, determine the t value left tail test so i'm going to be on the or in this case, we're going to be on this side over here. We're looking for the T. In this case, alpha is 0 0.01. In this case, N is 40. So that means degrees of freedom is 39. So 0 0.01 degrees of freedom, 39. So in here, 39 goes there. Not 40 because degrees of freedom is 1 minus N. Put that on the left side, N is 0 0.01 this time. Compute and you should get negative two point negative two point four three or negative four twenty six however you want we've got three decimals there negative uh two point four um negative two point four six if you go three decimal places for some reason the back of the book has that instead of two decimals and so this is negative two point uh four two six now this one here you have a two tail test N is 33, so degrees of freedom would be 32. And on this case here, we're looking for values on, we're looking for critical T values on these sides over here. And so, and in the end, um, alpha is 0 0.01, so this is 0 0.99 in between, or 99%. So here is going to be 0 0.005 and 0 0.005. So we need two values here. We need two values here, the area there. We're going to have two critical values, 0 0.0, can't fit this in, 0 0.005. Can't end up writing that in there. Um, 0, 0, 0.05, there we go. So that's what we have there. So we're going to go stat crunch degrees of freedom, 32. I'm going to put a 32 in here. We can do a between because I'm looking for both sides. And in this case, 0 0.99 would be my answer. And so you get negative 2.738 um, or negative 2.739 could be the answer also, plus or minus. So you have both of them there. Um, let me double check. Is the degrees of freedom right? Yeah, degrees of freedom 32. So my critical T's in this case are um, are going to be 2.739 and negative 2.739. If we round that up, that 5 made the 8 a 9. So that's what we have. That's problem number 2. Yeah, that's it. So problem number 2. So those are critical values. Um, let's go ahead and run a hypothesis test here. 
Um, are women getting taller? In 1990, the mean height of women 20 years ago was 63.7. Suppose that a random sample of 45 women. Um, and so from our sample, we have an X bar of 63.9. And the standard deviation, do we have it here? Uh, and the mean height is 63.9. Oh, we're not going to run the test, but this is the idea. We don't know what that is, but they give us some values here. State the null and alternative hypothesis. So step one, the null hypothesis is that the mean height is going to stay the same at 63.7. The alternative, this is part A, the alternative is that the mean, um, are we saying they're getting taller? So that the mean is actually six, is more, oh, sorry. It's more than 63.7. They're getting taller. We have evidence. Here's our evidence right there that maybe it's true, but is it really statistically taller than 63.7? So that's A. Suppose the p-value of the test is 0.35. Explain what this value represents. So a part B, let me squeeze it down here. Um, since the p-value is greater than alpha or, sorry, we don't even have an alpha, we're interpreting this. Since the p-value is big, right, 0.35 is more likely going to be greater than alpha. Um, but the question really is, what does what does that value mean? So let's see if I can squeeze it in here. Um, this 0.35 has a, a meaning. That means there is a 0.35 probability or a 35% chance. 0.35 uh, probability. Of, of obtaining um, a sample mean of 63.9. Sample mean of 63.9 or greater when the population when the population mean is actually 63.7. And so um, what this again means is that when we did a sample and got 63.7, even though it's less than, there was a 35% chance that we would have got that from a sample um, that we conducted. And so we cannot say that that's uh, st statistically significant. That's actually different than there because 35% chance is a big value. Write a conclusion for this hypothesis, hypothesis test assuming alpha is 0.10. In this case, uh, we, we would not reject the alternative, I mean the null hypothesis because we would not reject it because 0.35 is greater than 0.10, right? And so the conclusion we would just say is there is not sufficient evidence to support support the um, the alternative hypothesis. We don't have enough information, I mean, enough evidence to say that um, girls are getting taller. It's not there. Let's go ahead and get number 32 done. Um, the manufacturer of daily, daily, uh, sorry, daily dietary supplement claims that its product will help people lose weight. The company obtains a random sample of 950 adults who take the sum and find their mean weight loss after eight weeks to be 0.9 pound and a standard deviation of 0.72. So in this case, we have a sample of 0.9 mean, uh, 0.9 pounds loss, standard deviation of 7.2. So we're really trying to find out, does this work? Does the diet uh, supplement work? So part A, step number one, the null hypothesis is that the mean is equal to zero. The alternative mean know that there no weight loss was had. 
versus saying the mean is greater than zero if there is weight loss. That's what we have here. We're going to run this at the, so this is like your step one. Step two is um, to test it. Step two is your alpha is equal to 0 0.10. Step three is we need the T value. And then we need the P value that goes with that. So we're actually running the hypothesis. This is part B. We're running this here. Uh, we need those values. Where do I get those values from? Those values are going to come from StatCrunch. Might need some help going back. So let's take a look again. Stat. And this is T stats. One sample with summary. We know the sample mean is, um, in this case, uh, let me go back to that again. Where was it? We're looking at... Uh, the 0.9 and 7.2, 0.9 weight loss, 7.2 standard deviation, sample size, sample size was 950 adults. So 950 adults on average lost 0.9 weight. When we're checking that the alternative is that it's greater than, and we compute. And so then we get a T value of 3.85 and a p-value less than 0 0.0001, 3.85. So here our t-value is 3.85, and your p-value is less than 0 0.0001, very small p-value. So what can we conclude? Step four, what can we conclude on this one here? We can then say uh, we reject this one and pretty much accept that reject the null hypothesis since the p value is smaller than alpha and so where do those numbers again come from the p value is 0 0.0001 the alpha is 0.1 so there is weight loss about one pound on average so there's st statistical significance right there is some weight loss the next question would be do you think that a mean weight loss of 0.9 pounds is worth the expense and commitment of a dietary supplement? In other words, does a weight loss have any practical significance? And in general, they did lose weight, right? And so there's the key word, practical significance. We had statistical significance. They did lose weight. But I would say there is no practical, practical significance. Sig significance right who cares if you lose one pound you can lose one pound today tomorrow by tomorrow you can lose one pound losing one pound um, is not practically significant I don't think that we would invest our money or time in doing that question D test this hypothesis again let's do this again but this time you only have 40 subjects there's only 40 people this time is a sample mean weight loss 0.9 significantly more than a pound? Let's see here. So we just go to stat crunch, keep everything the same. The only difference we're gonna do is say that this results came from 40 people only. And so when n equals 40, we get uh, a 0.79 and 0.22 as your T stat and your P value. So when you keep, when you lower the sample size for part D in this case, your t is um, your t value is 0.79 and your p value so this is when n equals 40 your p value is 0.22 make sure i got that right 0.22 there it is and so i'll leave it three decimals um, 0.217, there's our p-value. Um, and so in this case here, because of that, we, uh, we do not reject, we would not reject the null hypothesis. What can you include about the impact of large samples on the hypothesis test? Again, so what would we say now that we reversed our decision earlier we rejected and so what would we now say about uh, sample size in this case here 
So what do we know here is that sample size has a, an influence on p-values. So again, the more accurate, right? The more, the bigger the sample size, the more sure we are can be with our answer. So what can we conclude about the large samples on the hypothesis? Sample size has an influence on p-values. And so that's where we could leave off.